Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we are continuing to track Hurricane Ernesto and the impacts it's going to bring to Bermuda and potentially Atlantic Canada, as well as what we could see coming after Ernesto. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for August 15th, 2024. The black arrow is pointing towards Hurricane Ernesto with winds of 85 miles an hour. And we have two tropical waves that we are monitoring in the uh, main development region, but none are expected at the moment to develop. Here's the vorticity signature of not only Hurricane Ernesto, but also our two tropical waves. One is approaching the Caribbean islands, as you can see by our red box right here, and one is in the middle of the main development region, uh, but it is surrounded by a lot of Saharan air layer. So here's the latest satellite image of Hurricane Ernesto. You can see it's trying to form an eye as we speak, and this thing is moving north at 13 miles an hour with winds of 85 miles an hour, and it's expected that Bermuda is uh, going to start seeing some of the impacts starting tomorrow afternoon as it gets closer to approaching. So we have hurricane warnings in effect. And you can see the cone of uncertainty uh, between Monday and Tuesday of next week shows that we could see direct impacts potentially around Atlantic Canada with Ernesto. And that cone of uncertainty is based on this spaghetti track guidance model. And in terms of our intensity, we're not expecting any further rapid intensification uh, but we could see this uh, strengthen a little bit more to Category 2 strength uh, before making landfall uh, potentially with Bermuda and then gradually decreasing in strength from there as it goes into cooler waters after Bermuda. So here's the key messages from Hurricane Ernesto. You could pause this to take a chance to read it. So we're going to look at the GFS model to not only see what impacts we could see Ernesto bring, but what comes after Ernesto. So I have three uh, tropical waves highlighted in purple to show you how those are going to project and what how the Atlantic could become more favorable over time in this region for development. So the upper levels of the atmosphere are are very conducive right now for Hurricane Ernesto to continue strengthening. It's got an upper level ridge overhead, but you can see it's not as favorable in the main development region. We have a lot of wind shear in this environment, and even though our tropical wave approaching the Caribbean islands in low wind shear right now, it's going to be in the outwash of Hurricane Ernesto, so it's going to go into a very high wind shear environment, so we're not expecting this one to develop. So here's the moisture content. You can see the large amount of Saharan air layer surrounding those other tropical waves. And if we move this forward two days from now to Saturday, August 17th, those waves will continue moving westward into the Caribbean and through the main development region, but no upper level ridges forming near them. So we're not expecting these to, to develop. Wind shear will still be high. So their moisture content will be lacking as you can see here. So let's move forward to five days from now on Tuesday, August 20th. We see that Ernesto has made its way up towards Atlantic Canada, giving a brush by of, uh, or uh, maybe some direct impacts right along the coast. Uh, and we have our other tropical waves moving through the island. Uh, near the Caribbean islands, our second tropical wave, we have another one coming off the coast of Africa and then one moving through Central America. Uh, but we're not seeing any development with any of these at the moment. Now that middle one, as you can see, is in a very light wind shear environment, but because it went through a heavy wind shear environment over those three days prior, it's lost all of its moisture content. So it's just a wave of Saharan air layer practically. But we do see some deeper tropical waves starting to come off the coast of Africa. So by the time we get to a week from now on Thursday, August 20th, 22nd, I should say, uh, 20th onward, like I said, is when we start to really get into the peak hurricane season. So I have marked this new wave coming off in a week's time in pink, 
and you can see all that moisture in that huge envelope uh, that's coming off with this tropical wave. So we'll have to keep an eye on this one because things are going to start getting a lot more favorable in the main development region in a week's time uh, with stronger tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa, but also decreasing in wind shear, which I'll show you. So here's the European model showing pretty much the same path for Ernesto and none of our tropical waves developing just yet. We are seeing some signals in a week's time uh, with our pink tropical wave for possible development, but still too early to say for sure. It's the Climate Prediction Center that says we have a, about a 40% chance of seeing development out near the Cabo Verde Islands between August 21st and the 27th. And then we see an even greater chance, around 60% through the main development region, August 28th through September 3rd, as we get even closer to the peak of hurricane season, which is September 10th, which would be a week after that, so week four. Why is this the case? Well, on the left side of your screen here, that green is indicating the rising air over Africa. So that's going to create a lot of strong tropical waves coming off the coast. And then on the right side of your screen here is our favorable rising air motion that we have right now helping Ernesto. And then we're going to see a couple of more of those pockets come at the end of August, around the 26th, and then again around September 6th, first in the eastern half of the Atlantic and then towards the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico portions of the Atlantic as we get to the peak of hurricane season. So we'll keep an eye on those regions for favorable rising air. But here's the decreasing that I'm going to show you in the wind shear. This is this week where the main development region, as you can see, is not very favorable. Next week, start to see some of that decreasing. We see a lot more neutral colors. And by the time we get to that last couple of days in August into the first few days of September, we can see how favorable the Atlantic actually starts becoming. It's very neutral and the Caribbean becomes very favorable. So we have to keep an eye on the peak of hurricane season going into September for these tropical waves because if this becomes correct, we're going to see potential firing up of a lot of those tropical waves as they move westward. In the meantime, we'll continue to track Ernesto and the impacts it will bring to Bermuda starting tomorrow into Saturday, and then Monday into Tuesday up into Atlantic Canada. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Ciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, you can head down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.